In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to replace the rotary receiver kit in the PDM 4.0 dispenser unit. First, order the rotary receiver kit, which is part number WT28069A01. And what comes in that kit is the rotary receiver. There is actually a coupler with a timing disc on it, and there's also some 242 Loctite with a couple of small set screws. So what you can see here, on the rotary receiver, there's a black mark, and there on the coupler, there is a hole where the set screws go. So when you install this, you need to make sure that the, where the coupler is at with the set screw, it needs to line up with the black mark on the rotary receiver. So it slides in like so, and I'll be demonstrating this during the video. If you were to put this, turn this 180 degrees, put it on the wrong way, it would throw your alignment off and no cable ties would leave the dispenser unit. Prior to doing any repair, make sure you're grounded properly. Now, I'll be removing the side cover. Next, I'll be removing these four screws from the face plate on the dispenser with a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Slide straight out. Next, I'll be removing eight screws from the main cover. One here, three on this side, two on this side, and two on this side with a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. After removing the last screw from the main cover, you want to slide the cover forward and then actually just lift it off to the right side and that's how you remove the cover. Prior to removing the front plate, carefully remove this electrical connector, just kind of wiggle it, pull it out from the touch screen. And then we're going to use a 5 millimeter Allen wrench and a 4 millimeter Allen wrench. You probably have a set like this. Uh, use the ball driver portion of the Allen, I'll show you. So there's two 5 millimeter Allen uh, wrench screws that have come in from the front. So as you can see, I'm coming on a little bit of an angle to remove this screw. And then there's also another one right here. Okay, so once you have the two 5 millimeter Allen screws removed, and what I'm going to do is lift the unit, and there's two 4 millimeter Allen screws that come in to the bottom of the front plate. Now I have all the screws removed. Now that the screws have been removed from the front plate and the electrical connector has been removed from the touch screen, I'm going to grab the rotor receiver, just hold it like this, grab my connector block with the front plate attached and just kind of wiggle it forward and pull it out and then I'm just going to kind of set it off to the side like so. I'm also going to remove this plexiglass plate here and then what I'm going to do is grab the rotary receiver and cover and pull it straight backwards and then I can pull it out so far and remove it. Um, now what I'm going to do is replace the rotary receiver. So I'll take this rotary receiver out, slide a new one in. And What I'm going to do is, as I mentioned prior, is this black mark on the rotary receiver. It needs to line up with the hole in the coupler and if you can see right here, there's a hole where the set screws go in the coupler. Now I'm just going to take my new rotary receiver with the rotary receiver cover slid over it, line it up like so. So I've slid the rotary receiver onto the coupler and then my rotary receiver cover needs to slide into the back plate. So now I have everything aligned and then I'm going to replace the front plate next. A couple things to pay attention to when reinstalling the front plate is the pin needs to go in the hole in the rotary receiver and also your the rotor receiver cover is going to fit into a slot in the front plate 
And also the hoses and wires on the bottom, make sure they're all tucked in the frame of the dispenser. Okay. Now I'm going to be reinstalling the front plate. I slid the pin inside the hole in the rotor receiver. Again, lifting my hoses up here. And now I'm lining up my rotor receiver cover into the front plate. And as you notice, I have everything kind of tucked inside the frame of the dispenser nicely. Now I'm going to put the two 5 millimeter Allen screws in and since this one I have to come at an angle, a lot of times I'll start it by hand to make sure because if you come at an angle you could possibly cross thread it. So again I got that 5 millimeter screw started and then what I'm going to do is grab the other one and I can have it come in just right through here and then I can start it real easy. So I have the two 5 millimeter screws started and I don't tighten them up all the way. Then I'm going to tip the unit up and grab my two 4 millimeter screws and I'm going to just finger start them here. And grab my 4 millimeter Allen wrench and completely tighten these up. Now I can set this back down and grab my five millimeter Allen wrench and complete finish tightening up these two screws here. Next we'll be replacing the coupler with the timing disc from the back of the unit. First I'll be removing the four 2.5 millimeter screws that go over the motor shaft cover. and also the motor shaft cover. Next I'll be removing the dispenser and alignment sensor and it's important to take and mark uh, where they go. So what I've done is put a red dot on this plate which will line up with the red head on this cable tie. There's a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the screws. Once you loosen these, you can just take and lift your sensors straight up. Okay, and I'm going to take the sensors, take the, the screws out of the sensors, and I will just set the sensors on the side over here. Now I'll be removing the four, four millimeter Allen screws that hold the motor in place. There's one here, one here, one inside here, and one here. And now what I can do is grab the motor and you, you need to spin the rotary receiver to get it lined up properly to remove the motor. So now I can pull it all the way out like so and I'll just set it down here for now. Now I'll be removing the set screws and by the way they're double set screwed so I'm going to remove the first one. And you also, you need a three millimeter Allen wrench. And I'll take and remove this set screw. And then like I said, once I loosen this set screw here, the bottom one, then the 
coupler will come off real easy. So you'll notice that I am able to remove that easily. Prior to putting your new coupler on, what you want to do is just make sure that this ring that's right here is seated in place. And I'll explain how that goes uh, for later in the video. And then what I'm going to do is I've already put some blue 242 Loctite on the first set screw. And you get that 242 Loctite in the kit. So I'm going to start my set screw like this. And then what I'm going to do is, as you see the flat on the motor shaft, you can probably see an indentation where the previous set screw was at. I'm just going to take and slide this on and line my set screw up right over the flat spot on the motor shaft. And then I'm going to bring it down till it hits. And then what I'm just back it off a little bit, make sure, and then tighten it down all the way to make sure I'm tightened down right on the flat of the motor shaft. Okay. I'll wipe off a little excess 242 Loctite. And then what I'm going to do is grab my second set screw. And as you can see, I've been, I've put a little 242 Loctite on there already. And then I'm just going to take and put that on top of the other set screw. And that just prevents the first set screw from backing off the shaft. Prior to reinstalling the motor, your wires are going to go on the left hand side as you're looking at it. But what you want to do is this ring, you want to make sure that it's flush on this side with the top of the motor shaft. This is so when you put your alignment and dispenser sensors, they line up here. So this ring has a tendency of falling off when you go to put it in. So periodically, I will take and put a dab of Loctite on the inside of this ring to help hold it in position. And what you want to do is kind of come at a little bit of an angle. But first of all, again, you want to make sure the black part of on the rotary receiver on the cutout lines up with the, the set screw here. Okay, so we got, I got this turned so it's on the side like this. I'm going to bring the motor in from the top here. And as I kind of bring it down, I'm going to take and slide this in. And my ring fell out of position. So what I'm going to do is take and put this back up into position now that I have it inside here. So now I have it lined up properly again. And then what I'm going to do is just slide the motor inside the shaft and then I have my ring seated properly there and now I'm in position and then next I will put the four four millimeter set screws back in. After I've installed the motor I'm keeping a little pressure on here to keep that ring in position and then as you can see I've put uh, 242 Loctite on all four of the screws I'm going to ins install those four screws to hold the motor in position So I'm just kind of finger tightening, tightening the screws initially, and then I will make sure I tighten them down all the way when I'm done getting all four screws in. Okay, now I've got all four screws in the motor and I'll just snug them going cross corner. Now your motor's back installed. Next, I'll be installing the motor shaft cover. And as you can see, there's a bent over lip, which is going to go on the left hand side. It's to protect the wires. So I'll just slide that into position. Okay. And then what I want to do is grab my 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench and put the four screws in. And lastly, I'll completely tighten these screws up. And 
and next I'll be installing the sensors up on top, the dispenser and alignment sensors. Now I'll be installing the alignment and dispenser sensors and again you want to make sure you put them in the proper position. Again I put a, a red dot on the plate where I have a red cable tie. So what I'm going to do is just take my sensor and the sensor, the open slot end here, it fits over the timing disc so I just want to make sure I get it seated properly and then take my 2.5 millimeter Allen screw and use this to hold that sensor in position. Now I'll be placing the other sensor and make sure I get it located properly over the timing disc and then I'm going to take and install my 2.5 millimeter Allen screw to hold that sensor in position as well. And now I have them tightened down properly. Next, I'll be turning the unit around and I'll be installing the covers. Now, prior to putting your main cover on, take and plug in your electrical connector, like so, and then grab your main cover. And what you want to do again is to kind of come in from the right side. And what I'm trying to do is my couple of airlines over here, make sure I dress them inside the dispenser, uh, inside the uh, frame of the dispenser. So I'm coming in from the right side. I'm making sure my cover is underneath this black piece right here. And so I got it like so. And then just pull, I'm going to pull the cover on the left side over so it, snap, it fits down. And then just kind of wiggle the, wiggle the cover forward. And now it's seated properly. And now I'm going to install the eight 2.5 millimeter screws. The location of your eight 2.5 millimeter Allen screws are one here, three on this side, two in the front, and two on this side. And I've started the screws, so I'm just going to finish tightening them. Next, I'll be reinstalling the front plate. Just sets on like so. And then we're going to take and install our four 2.5 millimeter Allen screws. By the way, the main reason for removing this front plate is so you don't accidentally damage the touch screen when you go to put the cover back on if this touch screen was in place. And the last thing we're going to do is take and put our side cover on, slide it in like so, and then tighten up my two thumb screws. That's how you replace the rotary receiver kit on your PDM 4.0 unit.